say hello, let's go ahead and take a look at graphing quadratic functions. Now, if you want to graph quadratic functions, what information do you need in order to do so? Now, the basic things is that if you know where the vertex is, and therefore you know where the axis of symmetry is, and if you find two other points, and therefore four other coordinates, you should be able to come up with a reasonable graph of a quadratic function. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the three forms of a quadratic function that you have. The first one is called the intercept form, and the reason why it's called the intercept form, of course, is because it's factored. And so it's going to be very easy for us to determine what the x-intercepts are if we let y be equal to zero, then we know that x is just going to be equal to alpha or x is going to be equal to beta. We also have the vertex form, and notice that the vertex form here is really just what the, what the form of the quadratic after you complete the square. And the nice thing about this one is this one is actually going to very quickly just give you the coordinates of the vertex. Okay? And then we have the general form, which is y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. And that form there is probably going to be the least helpful one for us. And we're going to probably, and we'll have to do a little bit of work in order to actually get that graph. So let's just take a look at some examples here of how we can use each one of these three different forms to come up with a reasonable graph of a quadratic, particular quadratic function. Now I'm going to just go ahead and use this form here. Let's say, for example, that we could actually come out with a factored form of the quadratic function, and the factored form actually looked like that. Now, of course, if we go ahead and let y be equal to zero, we can find the x-intercepts very straight, very quickly, and we know that the x-intercept is going to be x is equal to one or x is equal to negative three. So notice I put the dot there and the dot there because that's where the x-intercepts are. Now, the nice thing about the parabola, or any quadratic for that matter, is that there's symmetry through the vertex. Now, if I know that these two points exist on the graph as x-intercepts, then that means wherever the middle is, that's the value of the, x, uh, the axis of symmetry. So if I average those two, I get negative 3 plus 1, that's negative 2, divide that by 2, that's negative 1. The axis of symmetry is x is equal to negative 1. Now, being that I know that this is the axis of symmetry, then I know that the, the, the vertex is on this line. So if I substitute negative 1 in for x, then this is going to be, give me a negative 2. This is going to give me a 2. So that's 4, negative 4 times by 1 half, that's negative 2. So this value right over here is the value of the vertex. So I know basically what's happening now. This graph is actually opening up this way. Now if I wanted to go ahead and find just one other point, let's go ahead and do another value. Let's go ahead and do 2. If I substitute the value of x is equal to 2 into here, then this is going to be 1. That's going to be 5. 1 half times it by 5 is going to be 2 and a half. So this is going to be 2, 1, 2. Uh, this is 3, 2 and a half is about here. Now again, if I find that point using the axis of symmetry, then I know that I'm 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. I'm over here as well. Okay, and then now I can go ahead and join those coordinates there, and I can come up with a very smooth parabola. Now the one thing that people need to be careful of is make sure that this is not a point like that there. It's smooth and it's rounded. Okay, it's going to look something more like that. Okay. Now let's go ahead and take a look at one more example here. <clears throat> let's say, for example, we have a different function in a different form. And let's say, for example, that we have this. This is going to be negative 2 times y x minus 1 quantity squared plus 4. Now if we have that situation, or that particular equation, notice that this is the equation after you've completed the square then how are we going to go about drawing the, or graphing the quadratic function by doing this here? Well, the vertex is given to you already because you know that the vertex is actually going to be at 1, 4. So the vertex is going to be at 1, 4 right here. This is the vertex. Now, what we need to do is, being that we know that that's the vertex, we know that this is also going to be the axis of symmetry. 
we need to now go ahead and find two other points. If we find two other points, we can use the axis of symmetry and we can go ahead and find four altogether. So let's just go ahead and do a simple one. Let's let x be equal to zero. If we let x be equal to zero, then this is just going to be negative two times by one plus four. So that then would be two right here. Now, being that that is two, I, move, I go over here and I know that that point also exists because I'm using the idea of symmetry. And let's go ahead and let, uh, let's let x be equal to negative one. If we let x be equal to negative one, then this is negative two times by negative two squared plus four. So that's actually gonna be equal to a four. That's gonna be equal to a negative eight plus four. That's a negative four. So you know, wait, no, wait, did I do that right? Two, four, that's going to be, yeah, that's going to be negative eight plus four, so it's negative four all the way down here. So negative four here, and so if I know that this is where my axis of symmetry is here, then I can move over to here this way, and now I have a pretty good idea of what that looks like, so it's going to look something like that. Okay. So that's how we can go ahead and use the vertex form to very easily come up with with my five coordinates, including the vertex and the axis of symmetry. Now, the one that's going to take a little bit more work, but not that much more work, is when you actually just have the general form of the function. And so let's just say, for example, you have y is equal to, let's just say, x squared minus 4x plus 1. Now, again, the most important thing is where's the vertex and the axis of symmetry? Now, if you think about the quadratic function, the quadratic, oh, sorry, the quadratic formula is x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of the discriminant divided by 2a. What that means then is that if we just take a look at x is equal to negative b divided by 2a, that's where the axis of symmetry has to be. So what that means then is that if I go ahead and substitute these values into here, so x is going to be equal to a 4 over 2 times by 1, so x is going to be equal to 2. So I know then that my axis of symmetry is here. Now what I do after this is of course I just have to substitute some values into the function. Of course the most important one right now is actually when I actually let x be equal to 2. So if x is equal to 2, then that means that y is going to be equal to 4 minus 4 times by 2 plus 1. So that's going to be y is equal to 4 minus 8 plus 1. That's going to be equal to 5. So, oh, sorry. That's going to be equal to negative 3. So if I go ahead and take a look at negative 3, negative 3 would be about here, right there. And now I just have to go ahead and find two other points. So let's go ahead and find the y-intercept. That's always going to be easiest. That's just going to be 1. So it's going to be there. So that means 1, 2, 1, 2, so it's going to be there as well. And if I go ahead and let x be equal to 1, y is equal to 1 squared minus 4 times by 1 plus 1, that's 1 minus 4 plus 1, that's going to be equal to negative 2. So that's going to be negative 2 right here, and that's going to be negative 2 there, and you should be able to go ahead and very simply graph the parabola. So there you go. If you go ahead and take a look at how you want to graph the quadratic functions, you need to make sure that you have the vertex, the axis of symmetry, and two other points, and therefore four other coordinates. By using the axis of symmetry, by having two, you have the other two. The three forms are going to be very useful. If you can recognize this form, that form, and that form, you have a very easy strategy by which you can find this information and therefore graph the quadratic function. Okay, so give it your best shot. Let's see how it works out. See you next time. Bye.